Before we start our feast, let's just put our presence in the presence of Christ. He's here as we say, in the name of the Father, of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for another opportunity that you have given to us today. We feel like it's forever, Lord. We're so blessed, very blessed. And we thank you for all the guidance that you have given us. As we open our hearts, may it continue to guide us as we receive your beautiful message today. This is all we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Please be seated, my dear friends. Can you please tell someone beside you, I'm so blessed you are here. Amen. I can see it in your face. You're so happy, dear friends. Thank you so much. So without further ado, I, I want to introduce our guest speaker for today. None other than our friend, our builder, presiding leader of the Light of Jesus community. Our very own brother, Carl Fontanilia. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Can you greet the person beside you? You are so blessed today. Be ready for more blessing. Amen. Who among us here wants to be blessed? Raise your hand so that God can see you. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Thank you. Welcome to the feast. Welcome to your family in Hong Kong, the feast Hong Kong. I'd like to welcome the, the first time attendees here. Can you raise your hand? First time you come here. Amen. Let's give them a big hand. Welcome to the feast. I pray that this will be your spiritual home. It will be nourished as you come here. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, today we're going to have our continuation of our teaching series called The Biggest Winner. Can you tell the person beside you, you're a winner? Oh. I think some of the people are not, are, are not yet convinced. Can you just tell once again, you are born a winner? Yes? You know what? When I was telling that, some people would say, Brother Carl, how can I be a winner? You know, I'm, I'm poor. I'm just poor. How can I be a winner? There are people richer than me. My employer are richer than me. I'm poor. I can, how can I be a winner? Brother Carl, you know, I'm... I just failed in my, in my, in my work. Or, or somebody else got promoted. Because it was, I was expecting that promotion, but somebody else got that promotion. How can I, how can I be a winner? Brother Carl, I'm, I'm desperate in life. You know, I have broken relationship. I've never kept a relationship in my life. How can I be a winner? Brothers and sisters, I don't, I, I don't call that losing in life. Can you say losing? Losing? I don't call that losing in life. In fact, I call that just a setback. Can you say setback? Now, now when, you, when you experience problems in your life, when you experience difficulties, when you fail in your life, this is what actually happens to your life. You know, like when you're walking, this is your, you, this is your life. You, you're walking like here and you know, this is your winning life. You're, you're, you're successful and suddenly you experience a problem, a trial. You know what's happening in your life? Ask me what? Sometimes there, your life gets a detour. Can you say that detour? When you're, when you're traveling, when you're traveling in the road and you say a detour, some, something is going on there, right? Something's wrong there and somebody's fixing that road. And there's a sign that says detour, you go to this side. And that's, hap that's what's happening to you. If you go, you go to a detour, you, this, this, this road might be a little bit more difficult. This is more challenging. You know, you don't know where this road is going to lead. You're supposed to take that road, but God is bringing you to a detour. He's taking you here. And it's difficult. And you can't accept it. And don't, you don't know what's going on. But at that moment, you are going to a detour. Can you say detour again? Detour. And you know what? When that happens in your life, listen to me. When that happens in your life, God is fixing something there in your life. God is fixing that. Something is broken there in your life. And God is closing it and He's fixing that thing in your life so that when He opens again that road for you, that road is going to be the most beautiful road for you so that you can walk again and walk again and walk again and experience winning 
in life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Yes. <laughs> Tell the person beside you, you might be experiencing a detour in your life. Yes. Because you are born a winner. Amen. Yes. You are, you know. I don't know. I can, you, you can, can you just imagine for one moment at this time? Can you just imagine the moment you were conceived, right? Everybody has been conceived here, right? Everybody has been born here. Is there anybody here who not, who not been conceived? He just came out of the open and said, Oh, I'm here in the world. No. Yes. Somebody, all of us here were conceived. Can you just imagine for a second you're, you're being conceived there in the womb of your mother and there's, there's 20, more than 20 million sperm just, you know, just swimming and trying to elbow one another and then finally one sperm gets into the cell and that's you. That's you out of the 20 million. You are the one who came out. You're the winner. Yes. Yes. Can you just imagine that? And maybe you just, you don't imagine it yet. Maybe, maybe it's, oh, what's, what's that all about? 20, 20 million, you know. Have you ever, for those of you, you know, a lot of you are Filipinos. And in the Philippines, you have a call a loto. Yes, you know, a loto in the Philippines, yes. And a 6 by 42 loto. You know, how, how, what's your chances of winning a loto in the Philippines? Ask me what. Why? One in every five. I, I just want to make sure because... I took it down. It's a difficult number. For you to win in the lotto, your chances of winning is 1 in every 5,245,786 chances. Meaning, if, if you just gathered 5,245,786 people, you gathered them together and asked them to bet every single combination of that lotto, only one is going to win. One in five million. But brothers and sisters, you made it in 20 million. You're a winner. You're a champion in life. Yes. Just imagine that. I mean, you know, sometimes you're facing difficulties in your life. You, don't, you forget that you were born. That you are born a champion. Yes, you are. Tell the person beside you, you are born a champion. Amen. See, so if you believe that you are born a champion, if you believe that you're, you're going to win big in life, because that is God's plan for you, let's all stand. Let's all stand up. What, let's all pray what the, the prayer of the champions. This is the prayer of the champion. This is the prayer of the people who are winning and who believe that they have been born a champion. They are born a winner. And let's all pray together this. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessing, healing, and miracles. And today I open myself to God's words so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I'm blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's raise our hands to the word of God. That is a lamp unto my and the light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and the light unto my path. The word of God comes from the book of Daniel, in chapter 1. Let's all read together. Please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetable to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food. Can we say royal food? Royal food. Let's continue. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they took healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. Let's put our hands over our, our chest and pray this with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding us that we are winners of life, that we experience failures and difficulties. But we know that these difficulties and failures 
are only preparing us for a bigger battle in life where we will win because we know that whoever is for you no one can be against us in Jesus name Amen Amen Just raise our hands it's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand, hallelujah. Let's give him praise. Glory and honor and glory. Praise your name. Thank you for your word. Amen. Oh, yes. Please be seated until the person beside you, God, will speak to you today. Amen. Amen. How many of you here wants to be healthy again? Raise your hands. Yes. How many of you wants to be at the 90 years, or you're 90 years old and you're still going to the feast in this Caritas, Manila, and being able to climb that stairs at 90 years old? Yes? No, no, no need for an elevator. You're 90 years old. You're going to climb that stairs and you're going, you're going to bring those speakers here. You're going, at 90 years old, you're going to bring the speaker here. And who among you here wants to be healthy, even 100 years old? Amen. Yes. You know, you're, you're a flight steward and you're 60 years old and they tell you, come on, just serve here. Come on, just come. even if you're 65, I want you to be our flight steward because you look like 40 years old. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I have good news for you. Tell the person beside you, yes, you can be. Yes, you can be healthy. I've got news for you. My message today for you is this. If you want to be healthy, Listen to this. If you want to be healthy, if you want to live long, if you want to just stay beautiful, who wants to stay beautiful? Raise your hands. Yes! Wow. I think I finished my talk. I can't end this. All of you here, they just want to be healthy. You, you had enough, you know? I mean, if you want to be healthy, if you want to grow healthy and, and grow old, healthier, you have to listen to this. You have to eat the right kind of food. Yes. Yes. You have to tell me what's the right kind of food, brother. The right kind of food is a food that nourishes the food that heals. My big message for you today is next slide, please. Can we all read? Eat God's food and be healed. Can you tell the person beside you, eat God's food and be healed. Wow. You know, this, this talk is going to be a difficult talk for you and for me. But we're, we're going to win in this talk. Amen? Yes? You know, we just read in the Bible the story about Daniel, the book of Daniel. Daniel, Daniel is a Jewish young guy with his friends, their three friends, there's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Grab. It is so difficult oh, words. No? Daniel. Daniel with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There are four Jewish young people. It was the time of, of the King Nebuchadnezzar, another difficult name, you know? King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. He attacked Jerusalem and conquered Jerusalem, and he was the king. So the Jews were, were under him. And the king Nebuchadnezzar wanted to, to have a team of young, intelligent, young, good-looking, young men, intelligent, you know, with, with, uh, body built well, like, like they're, they're, they're like the young artists, you know. And so he asked this chief, he's one of these chiefs, you gather all the young men in this kingdom, even Jews or non-Jewish, you gather them all and and take care of them. I want them to become the, my elite team, the young people who can help me run this kingdom. So the chief gathered all the young people, the intelligent young men and handsome men, and they gathered. And Daniel was there, Daniel together with his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the king told the chief that 
you, you have to take care of them, you have to feed them. Feed them with royal food. You know what I mean? You have to train them and you have to take care of them and feed them with royal food. And when I was thinking about royal food, what's the royal food? Yeah. When, you're, when you're in Hong Kong, what's the royal food? What's the Chinese royal food? It must be like abalone, you know, the rich, expensive abalone. What's that? Peking duck. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're expensive, you know. You, you, you go to a menu and say, there's a Peking duck. Ooh, it's, it's so expensive. must be the royal food. Or maybe the bird's nest. Have, you, have, have anybody eaten the bird's nest in bird's nest? It's, that is expensive, you know. If you're, if you're an American, maybe the royal food is a steak. You know, steak. Yeah? Angus steak. You know? so some of you maybe heard about Angus steak. It's a very tender steak. And, you know, in the Philippines, we have a steak like that. It's, it's uh, made in Batangas. Yeah. And uh, it's not a soft. It's, it's actually hard. So when, when you eat it, it's not angus, but anguish. Anguish beef. You know, you're, you're, you're angry. <coughs> that's, kind of, that's the meat. No? It's royal food. And if, if you're a Japanese, you eat Kobe, Kobe beef. It's, you know, the, 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 the cow, the Kobe beef, where they, where they get the, the meat, from the cow, the cow don't move. They, they're, they're elevated. They're suspended in air so that they don't, if they move, their muscle becomes hard. If you're a Filipino, what is royal food for you? It's lechon. You know, it's for, for the foreigner, lechon is like a roasted, lechon, a roasted pig or a roasted cow. You know what I mean? Have you eaten a roasted cow in your life? Uh, maybe shawarma? Huh? That's a uh, roasted cow or, or prawn or lobster. You know, it's the royal food. And, 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 the, and, and the king, Nebuchadnezzar, told them, you feed these young people with royal food. But Daniel and all and his friends he said, no, we're Jewish. You know, we don't eat those dirty food. You know, we eat only vegetables. We, we don't eat shrimp. That's, 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 uh, uh, that's, that's not for us. You know, we're, not, we're not allowed to eat pork. Those days, the royal food, the, you know, the, Jewish, the Jewish tradition, that God's commandment is telling them, don't eat pork, don't eat shrimp, and, and we, don't, we don't want to eat royal food. So the chief was, you know, he was, he was afraid. He was, but Daniel, if, what happens to you after so many days and the king sees you and you're skinny, you don't eat the royal food, you're skinny, you're only eating vegetable, and you're skinny, the king will, will get mad at me and, and may even kill me and send me to prison. But Daniel said, I'll, 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 please, please give us a chance, you know. We, we're going to eat what we want to eat. What, what we want to eat, we want to eat vegetable, what God wants us to eat. And after 10 days, how many days? 10 days. You test us. So the chief agreed. And after 10 days, lo and behold, you know, Daniel, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego, the four of them, were even healthier, were even sturdier. They look healthier than those who have been eating royal food. Brothers and sisters, God's food is in the Bible. God's food is in the Bible. It tells us that there are food, in, that, there are food that can heal, that food that nourishes and food that can heal. Let's slide, please. Read this with me. Food is the master key of a healthy body. Yes, food is the master key. And today we're going to learn the three steps of Daniel's food habit. Or can, we, can you look at the le- next slide, please? The three steps of Daniel program. We'll call it the Daniel program of eating healthy food. Food that nourishes and food that heals. Are you ready? Yes? Are you ready to hear the, the Daniel program? Yes? You know, I mean, I'll be honest with you. That if, I'm going to, if I was going to give this talk two years ago, I would have begged off. Really. I mean, it's, it's difficult for me. I mean, this, this program, this teaching that I'm going to teach you today is difficult for me. If I was going to give it two years, from, two years ago, but then I'm so happy right now that I'm, I'm giving this chance to give this talk because I've learned to live this. 
this program, this, this eating habits in my life. I'm, I'm not done yet. I'm not really on the, on the final, I mean the whole, the highest form of, of living this in my life, but I've been living it slowly and gradually and, and experiencing the benefit of being healthy in life, of being, having a healthy body because I eat the right kind of food. I eat God's food for me. That's why I'm going to share it with you. It's, it's difficult because anyway, this is, the feast is all about can we, can, do you believe that when you come to the feast and you learn something, you don't go out there and say, you're, you're, you're okay, you're free. I mean, you're, you're, you're changed overnight. No. The feast is not about changing overnight. The feast is about sustaining, coming here and, and living your life, changing your life, and trying to struggle and challenging your life, changing every day, every week, every month, until you are completely changed by God. That's why this program is about sustaining this program is about is about persevering it's about patience it's about getting results two years from now several months from now one year from now this program is going to give you a healthy body this program is going to give you a healthy life are you ready yes tell the person beside you are you ready yes next slide please the first program can we read Fruitify your breakfast. There's, not, there's no word as fruitify in the Bible or in the, in the dictionary. We invented that word. It's fruitify your breakfast. You know, my, one of my favorite breakfasts before was bacon. Bacon. No. The reason I love bacon so much is because we were super, I shared that to you a lot, uh, in, the, in the last piece. I said we were poor and uh, my, work, my mother would work in a, in, as a domestic helper, as a maid. And, you know, and sometimes she would cook bacon. Hmm, what's that smell? I said, but, you know, we couldn't eat. So but sometimes she would just pick a little bit and then let me taste. And, wow, wow, it's so tasty. That's why when I had a, my job and I was able to earn money, I would always buy bacon. And bacon, I love bacon. And bacon is my breakfast. And I like bacon. It's, it's wow, it's like mouth, mouth watering bacon. But brothers and sisters, I realized there's, there's a problem there when you eat a lot of bacon. I mean, I'm not fat, but there's something that happened to me because of eating bacon. You know, fruitify your breakfast. Now, you know what? My breakfast now is just fruits. Breakfast fruits. Can you believe that? I mean, just I just eat fruits in the morning. Sometimes when people invite me for breakfast, okay, I need to eat this. It's good. Sometimes you need to. That's why I'm saying, you know, this learning things in the feast is not overnight. It's it's a it's a matter of struggle and persevering. But then you you work on yourself and then you you reap you you harvest the goodness that you do for God. So I, I eat fruits. I just. And then I, I, I skip a little, like an hour before I eat. I like to eat pandesal as well. I like pandesal with cheese, but that's all my breakfast. I just eat fruits, and different kind of fruits. And then after that, I eat a little bit of pandesal. That's my breakfast. That's my breakfast. Because fruits is, you know, fruitify your breakfast. And, you know, there's, I'd like to share with you one of the ancient, ancient way of, an ancient medicine that has been you know hidden for a quite a while but this is so amazing i tried it in with me and my wife and it's called like if do you want to have a, you know you do want to strengthen your immune system yes your immune so that you can be stronger when there we, we studied that last time right St making our immune system stronger what we do in manila is we squeeze calamansi okay calamansi i don't think you have calamansi here in in hong kong yeah you can get lemon, okay, lemon. I don't know, I think lemon is not expensive here, but in the Philippines, we, we, we squeeze calamansi. We feel like we start with one-fourth cup of calamansi. Here you can start with one-fourth cup of lemon. The moment you wake up, you, you prepare that and you drink it without water. Just drink it, you know what I mean? <sighs> one-fourth cup. And then next week, one-half cup. And then the following week, three four cup okay now just drink it when you drink it don't eat anything don't drink anything not even water for one hour just just drink it and then for one hour don't drink anything and it will do a lot of wonder 
for you. I mean, some of you here, like Ferdy is doing that already. You've learned that. And it's so wonderful. It keeps your body strong. It, 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 I mean, I couldn't believe it. I have a friend who's been suffering from, from acidic stomach, from acidity for years. I mean, been to the doctors, a lot of doctors, and, and he just, she just started this. And she couldn't believe it. What? That's acid. I mean, Kalaman see that's acid. Why, why will I drink that? That will make my stomach even more acidic. And, but no. We've realized and we've learned that when you, when you drink pure, pure juice of this without mixing with water and it goes into your stomach, it actually becomes an alkali. And you need alkali in your body. Your body with a full of alkali, no germs, no bacteria can survive. Bacteria survive in an acidic environment. They cannot survive in an alkali environment. And he has done so much wonder for me. So much wonder. Amen? Can you just give the Lord a big hand? Yes? Imagine what, what God has given us so much. You know, in the Bible, it's, they just eat fruits. Fruitify your breakfast. Can you tell the person beside you? Fruitify your breakfast. Yes. The fruits have, can do so many wonderful things for us. In fact, they can do five wonderful things. How many? Five. Let's, first slide, please. Number one, the first, the first benefit or gift. Okay, can we read that uh, Bible verse? I forgot about that. Can we go back again? Can we read Genesis 1.29? I have given you every plant with seed on the face of the earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed, this will be your food. Amen. Fruits has a lot of healing power. Next slide, please. Five wonderful gifts that fruits give us. Next slide. First, can we, receive, can we read all together? More water. Yes. You know, like 80% of our body is water. 80% of the fruit is water. And we, there have been so many things, healthy things about water. They have alkali water. I think here you have diamond water, you know, right? Diamond water, emerald water, sapphire water, whatever, pearl water. But the purest water you can have is the, is the water inside the fruit. You see? I mean, they just process that. Nature processes that so much, so pure. But when you eat fruits every morning, you don't need to even eat, drink water. You know, like me, I don't drink water in the morning. I eat a little. I drink water for my vitamins, but... Before that, no water, just pure fruits because fruit is 80% water. We need water. We, you know, when you're dehydrated, you feel weak. Yes? You know, if, you're, if, you're, you know, if I have a headache, you know, I said one of the first things that comes into my mind if I have a headache is I need water. And I've, I've tested that. I, I drink warm water. Just drink warm water and warm water. In a few minutes, your headache is gone. See? I don't know if it worked. It worked for me, for many and many people it worked. Water. We need water. Water is life for our body. We need water. And when we eat fruit, it gives us more water. Next, beautiful things about fruits. More enzymes. You know, the first time I heard about this, I realized that, you know, I, we forget about enzymes. Can we read that, enzymes? Enzymes are the miracle worker of our body. You know, the enzyme is... When it's like a house, when you build a house, there are so many materials like wood, iron, all of these things, nail and cement. These are, you cannot put the house together with just this material. You need workers. The enzyme is the worker. In our body, when we eat food, somebody has to, some element there has to turn this food into something else. You know, it digests your food inside. So, some of this food has to turn this for food for the liver. This is the food for the brain. Okay, again, food for the brain, you know, because sometimes there's less food for the brain and food for your kidney, food for your heart. Somebody in our body, something there is working on that, trying to change this food that we eat and converting them into a useful nutrient for your body to function well, for, the, for all the organs to function well. And that thing there is the enzyme. Can we say enzyme? That's, that's the magic worker of our body. If we don't have an enzyme in the body, something goes wrong with our body. And, we, and, and, and when we eat fruit, 
we, we just eat a lot of enzyme, the good enzyme. You know, I mean, like when you eat banana, this morning I was eating banana and, uh, you know, uh, Mommy Lily was telling me, why do you like the banana that, that's not, uh, there's some brownish in there? You know, I eat banana in, back at home in the Philippines, I eat everyday sabah. This is the, the native banana. And I like the ripe banana, especially the banana that's already a little bit brown. Ask me why. Because that, you can see there the enzyme. That's really the enzyme working. The banana there, that's why it's, beating, it's be, getting a little bit brownish because of the work of the enzyme. When you, whenever you peel an, a, an apple, you know, you peel an apple and you leave it in, in the air, it turns into brown. Yes, the surface. That's the enzyme working. Enzyme trying to preserve the apple. Enzyme trying to preserve the banana. And that's what you, you eat when you eat the fruits. You eat the enzymes and the enzymes work inside your body. That's, when you get, that's what you get when you, when you fruitify your breakfast. You eat a lot of enzyme. More enzyme. Next slide, please. Number three. More fiber. Yeah. You know, we, we need fiber in our stomach if you are if you if your cholesterol is high you eat a lot of fruits because the fiber reduces cholesterol you know the fiber cleanses your your colon your your intestine the fiber just like sweeps into the dirty things inside your intestine that's the work of the fiber and the fiber is is really a, a cholesterol high blood if you have high blood pressure and you eat a lot of fruits the fiber just reduces your blood pressure. I mean, especially if, if you want to go to the bathroom every day. I mean, just one day. At least a day you go to the bathroom. You don't have a problem that, you know, you go to the bathroom, it's already two hours and still you know, nothing's happening there. And you're saying the rosary there already. You read the gospel already, the epistle. It's a, say, okay, I'll pray the rosary or novena and everything. It's still not getting out. You, know? you need fiber. Yes. Fiber is the thing that will bring out everything that's, that's, that, that has to be brought out from your body. And you get your fiber from the fruits. Next slide, please. More nutrients. Can we see that? Nutrients. Ladies, listen to me. Do you want to stay beautiful? Yes. You want to have a skin, you know, like skin of a 14, 8, 20, 30 years old and you're already 60? Yes. You know, some maybe you like so many cream, you know, they're expensive cream. You know, they're, okay, you, you, you can use it, but you know what? Science and studies have shown that when you eat a lot of fruit, your skin becomes healthier. Yes, I mean, I've, I've, I've noticed that to myself, you know, like before I have dry skin and oftentimes I would have to put some cream in my face and in my hands to just you know, keep my skin with, uh, with nourishment. So it's really dry. Sometimes it flakes. My skin flakes here on the side, you know. And I uh, said, dandruff? No, it's in my face. It's not dandruff in my face. Uh, but then when I started really eating vegetable, uh, fruits every day, every morning, just fruits every morning, you know, my, my face started to glow, you know. <laughs> they, they say, wow, what... You're, would you, somebody wants to say, can I, can I get you in a TV commercial? I uh, said, no, I'm, I only work for Light of Jesus. I don't want to work for a TV commercial. Not, no, no, no product for me. I cannot endorse any fruit. Uh, that's why they say you know, they, they have papaya soap, right? Uh, avocado soap, you know, uh, calamansi soap, right? All the fruits in the soap. Uh, why, can you eat the soap? No, right? Uh, why, why buy the soap? It's so expensive. You just buy the papaya. You buy the melon. You buy the avocado and eat it. And when you eat it, you get more nutrient and you get glowing skin. Yes. Give the Lord a big hand. Yeah. Amen. Next slide. More energy. You know, when you eat fruits, you consume a lot of energy to digest the fruits. Yes. You know, do you know how long it will take for your stomach to digest meat, you know, pork, beef, or chicken? You know, ask me how much. 
it will take you one, at least one to three days to digest the meat inside your stomach. And when, you do, when that happens, especially if you eat so much, like you eat like a, you know, like a plate full of, of lunch and dinner, don't you feel like, ah, you're sleepy? You know, like you want to sleep. You know, why? Because your blood is just going down and trying to, 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 to digest everything there. But if you eat fruits, you don't lose a lot of energy. You eat a little, you use only little energy because it takes only 30 minutes to digest the fruits. And then you feel, wow, you feel light. Amen? Amen. All right. Fruits no. uses less energy. Step number one is Fruitify your breakfast. Okay, tell the person beside you again. Fruitify your breakfast. Oh, I think I'm going to lose a lot of audience here already. You know, brother, how come? How's my longanisa? How's my tocino? For 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 the foreigner, longanisa is the is everything that the pig. You know what's left over in the fig, pig, and they put it in his sausage and everything. Oh. What's my humble? Okay, next, the next step number two. Next slide, please. All right. Can we all read aloud? Vegify your lunch and dinner. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Fruitify my breakfast and vegify my lunch. Oh no. What is Brother Carl saying today? I should I should have skipped this feast. I mean I I, I was sick. I could have been absent today. All right. You know, brothers and sisters, one of the important lessons I've learned from my old folks, from my grandparents, they live 90 years old. And maybe some of you here, they have grandparents living in the provinces, in the rural areas, and you learn a lot of them. My, my grandfather died at an age of 92, still strong, if not for, for a sickness. I mean, he got pneumonia. But before getting pneumonia, he was, he was up and running. He, was, he would go to the farm. He was strong. 90 years old guy. And I, you know, I, I realized that they're so strong, they're so healthy because in the province, you know, they cannot afford to eat meat. You know, they, eat, they eat vegetable. They, they plant the vegetable and they only harvest the vegetable that they will cook today because they don't have refrigerator. No electricity. That's why there are also a lot of people there. No electricity. Many children. Okay. That's the secret of the Filipino. Why do we have so many in the province? No electricity. So that's their hobby. No. Making children. No electricity. That's their uh, pastime. Okay. But no electricity, no refrigerator. Oh, this is the fruit pala I have. See, these are all my fruits. Thank you, Sister Janice, for this. You, I think it's not so expensive here in Hong Kong. In the Philippines, it's quite expensive. But then, you know, like saba in, in the Philippines is cheap. And I, I eat saba every day, me and my wife. We eat saba. No? And saba, you see, when you eat banana, you, you have a very fair skin, right? You don't have pimples. Ask me why. Have you seen a monkey with a pimple? No. See? That's why. This one, this is your secret. You don't want to have pimple, you eat banana every day. Okay. Can we give the Lord a big hand? Yes? Wow. Thank you, Sister Janice. Fruits. You know, go to the vegetable. Okay, vegify. Uh, they don't have they don't have refrigerators. They, they, only, they only eat vegetable. Sometimes they go to the river and fish. They, they, they eat fish. And you know what? In our, in our province, whenever... Whenever we want meat, okay, we want pork, we will have to call all the village people. Who wants pork? Yes, how much? One kilo, one kilo, two kilo, three kilo, four kilo, and then 20 kilo. Okay, we can kill the pig already. We have 20 kilos, we're going to buy the, the pork. That's what we do. I mean, you cannot, cut the, cannot slaughter the pig and you don't have refrigerator. You, do, you cannot store them. So you need to ask all the village people. Yes? That's how they help. They're, they're healthy. They eat pork. It's like, it's a fiesta for them when they eat pork. Be 
a vegetable lover. Next slide, please. Be a veg lover. No. Now, here's the key. Now, I'm not saying that you eat just 100% vegetable. Now, here's, my, here's, my, here's, what I, here's what I do in my life. And here's, here's what we advise you, my dear first feast attendees, brothers and sisters, on how to, to vegify your lunch and dinner. You know, if right now you eat like 80% rice, okay, some P Filipinos, they do 80% rice and uh, 5% rice again, you know. <laughs> okay, so that's 85 already. And then another 5% rice again. So 10% is the meal, the ulam, you know, the, the, the fish or whatever. So you get 90% of this and then only... No vegetable. And sometimes, you eat a little bit. I mean, 5% vegetable. Okay, you, you cook a, a, a chicken broth, you know, with, with a lot of chicken and a small leaf there. You cannot, you, you have to look for it. Where, where's the vegetable there? Where is it? You know? So, th here's my advice to you. Reverse it. Use 80% vegetable and then you can continue eating chicken or if you want meat. 20% and rice. Make vegetable the biggest part of your food. Like I was, this, this, uh, this lunchtime, I was, I was eating my lunch and I, oh, I'm so thankful that Sister Peachy brought some vegetable. Thank you, Sister Peachy. Thank you so much. Yes. So, Sister Peachy brought vegetable and we had, we had uh, ampalaya, the, you know, the bitter. Uh, yeah, we had it. So, I, ate, so I, ate, I still ate chicken or eat rice, but I eat more, more vegetables. No? And that's, that's, that's what I do. It's, and, and sometimes, brothers and sisters, sometimes it's, like, it's difficult. Like when you do it for the first week, like, oh, 10 o'clock, I'm hungry already. Oh, Ooh, where's my bacon? Where's my ham? Where's my egg? You know, where's, where's, where's my sinangag? Uh, you, you, where's the bread? You know, it's just like you're hungry. It's okay, you know, just carry another like this. Remember, remember the monkey, you know, just carry one like this in the office. Just bring about, you can bring one, 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 one basket of banana or if so you're hungry, you eat apple. Yes, come on, just eat. If you're hungry, just continue. Just struggle and struggle and you will be surprised after a week or two or even a month, you don't get hungry anymore. I mean, you just fill up yourself with fruits. You don't get hungry anymore. You eat lunch, you eat, you eat vegetable, and oh, vegetable, 80% vegetable, and they only, they get digested 30 minutes, and it's gone, and my, my stomach is already complaining. Where's the, where's the, where's the meat? Where's the rice? It's okay. You feel weak? It's okay. Struggle, struggle, and you will realize how your health will change how your life will change, how you will feel better, lighter. And then you don't get sick that, that easily. You know, I, I mean, like me, I was, when I came here, or when I came uh, to Hong Kong, I arrived yesterday, even yesterday morning when I was taking my plane and the other, I was not feeling well. I mean, a few days, it was a stressful day and I wasn't feeling well. I had a slight headache, but I was just bearing it. But I don't eat, drink medicine anymore although I carry a medicine bag if I really need to drink it, but I don't drink medicine anymore. What I do is I, I eat less, I, eat, I drink water more, I eat fruits more, I eat vegetable more, I eat less and less, and then I get well. Now I'm feeling so good today. I mean, just this morning I wake up and I feel so good. Just feeling good. Yeah. And that's what you feel when you eat God's food, because God's food heals. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Yes. Next slide, please. Eat, make vegetable your main dish for lunch and dinner. Next slide. Eat roast salad every day. Yes. I, mean, I don't know, maybe in, in here it's not expensive. In the Philippines, it's quite expensive, the salad. But, you know, like I've said, there's so many inexpensive vegetables. You don't... I, if we even eat plants, you know, like... I was sharing with my, with my brothers and sisters here, every evening I eat acetaba leaf for my, for my uric acid. Acetaba is a plant. No? It's, it's what the goats eat. No? The acetaba is 
you, I eat two leaf every night, and it, my uric acid has gone down substantially, and I don't experience, you know, this painful gout. You, you know, sometimes your 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 knees get swollen. I've experienced that many times in my life, and when I started to eat healthy, and also eat this acetabul leaf, it's so helpful to me. You know, it cured me, cured me. You know? So. Salad, no? Salad has a lot of enzyme. Next slide, please. Enzyme deficiency is a silent killer. If you don't have enzymes, slowly your body deteriorates and your, your body gets sick. Next slide, please. Your body is like a cell phone. You know, when you don't have an enzyme, you get low bat. Low bat, you get, you get weaker. You get low bat if you don't have enzymes. So you need to recharge. You need to eat fruits and vegetables so that you can get enzyme and then you get charged. Next slide, please. Enzyme is the secret to health. Amen. Next slide, please. Poor digestion equals poor health. Excellent digestion equals excellent health. Amen. You know, if you just, you know, everything that you eat, it just goes out. You know? Like me, I do regularly once a day, sometimes twice a day. My wife is a bit better because she exercises. She goes to the bathroom at least twice a day, even three times a day, you know, normal. So whatever she eats in a few minutes, it goes out, and absorbs by the body, and then everything that's waste there goes out. And you feel so light, you know, just feeling healthy because you have this. I've also noticed that when you have enzymes in your body, you don't get upset stomach easily. Sometimes I eat bad food, you know, like before. That's why I always carry, what do you call this, this anti-diarrhea. Uh, you know, in, in the Philippines, we call it loperamide. I always have loperamide. Because I eat something, you know, really a little bit bad, I get, go to the bathroom immediately. Now... I mean, praise the Lord. I mean, sometimes I eat something, oh, what's that? But then, never had an upset stomach. Never for the past two years. Just, you know, sometimes I really eat a germ and it just loses me, but not so much today. Not so much because of fruits and vegetables. Many years ago, again, next slide, please. Okay, before that, can we go back to the next slide? Poor digestion. Many years ago, I've been suffering from high blood pressure. My pressure was about 130, 140, and one time I had to go to the hospital because I was dizzy. It's about 160, 180. And I tried to, you know, aside from the stress in my work, try to think about myself. When I'm sick, I always reflect, you know. When you're sick, you reflect. Tell the person beside you, when you're sick, reflect. Yes. Why am I sick? You know, it's good. You know, you don't go to the doctor and say, Doctor, I'm sick. So the doctor will say prescription and then you drink medicine. You reflect. So I was reflecting on myself and I realized that every week I eat my favorite hamburger. Oh, in the Philippines, it was my favorite hamburger in the Philippines is Burger King. See? Burger King is, you know, there are they're, 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 they're actually not only three kings, yeah, there are other kings. The one king went to the U.S. and became Burger King. Okay? One went to, went to China, he, came, he became Chow King. Yeah. And the other one went to the Philippines, he, he became Tapa King. Oh, the, the foreigners don't know that, no, this Tapa King. So there are not only three kings, there are six kings. So one of the kings is the Burger King, and I love Burger King because it's, it's, it's roasted, and I eat every Wednesday. Honestly, I would go to the drive-thru for lunch, bring my car, drive-thru in, in uh, United Nations, Burger King, drive-thru, Whooper Jr. with French fries, and I would eat it and just, I just love it. But then, you know, it, it, was, it was the source of my high blood, hypertension. And I stop it. And I do a diet, and lo and behold, after six months, my blood pressure was down. My pressure was down. Well, I think you look depressed today. Uh, and I mean, oh my goodness, oh, where's the embutido now? Uh, 
the morcon, you know, the pecking duck. You know, what am I going to do? Yes. Well, you wait for this step number three. Step number three, next slide. Organify your food. Yeah. Organ Can you get next slide, please? All sorts of sickness today because of huge amount of processed food consumed every day. Processed food, longanisa, what, you know, uh, tocino, yeah. corned beef, yes, uh, sausage, you know, uh, frankfurter, spam, oh my goodness, yeah. You know, their processed food, they 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 actually they they you know there's their meat there there there's there's meat in it, but there's a lot of also poison in it. I mean, just the way because they need to put they need to put these ingredients. You know, hamburgers. You know, next slide, please. If man made it, minimize eating it. If it's processed, please, if you can avoid it. You know, once in a while you eat processed food, you know, just to you satisfy your craving for it. But you can avoid processed food. Why? Next slide, please. Because processed food, almost zero nutrition. No matter whether you read it at the back and it says, you know, vitamin A, vitamin it's processed food. You know, how can... Next slide, please. Harmful chemicals, especially nitrates. Nitrates are used to, to maintain the food, to preserve the food. Okay, next slide, please. Trans fats and partially hydrogen. You know, fats, if they're natural, you can eat them. I mean, I've read a book that you can eat actually the fats of pig and, and, and cow as long as they're raw. You know, the moment they cook it, something happens to the fats. It converts into trans fat. It becomes a harmful fat. Because you can just imagine the old people. They were not cooking before. They just go to the, they run after the boar and run after the cow. They slaughter them, eat them raw. Your body can process this natural fat, but not trans fat, hydrogenated fat. Next slide, please. Sweet sugar and fructose, you know, a lot of, you know, like, like now, even, even sugar, we, I use, I just used uh, cocoa sugar, the wonder cocoa sugar in the Philippines. There's a, there's a beautiful product, it's also cheap, it's called cocoa sugar. It's a sugar made of coconut juice, so helpful. Next slide, please. Refined grains. You know, you, the grains, they when they you don't get, you just you get. Yes, you're full. You 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 don't get hungry, but you don't get anything from processed food. Eat fruit for breakfast. I don't know. I'm not familiar in in, in Hong Kong. Maybe a lot of fruits that are cheap. You eat the inexpensive fruit. Eat a lot of vegetables. Be a vegetable lover, as I've said. Slowly, slowly converting the bigger portion of your food, your dish, from whatever it is today to vegetables. Slowly. If you're 80% rice, 20% other meal and everything, convert it slowly. Making it 10% vegetable, 20% vegetable, 30, 40, 60, until your body can adapt to vegetable diet. And you'll never regret it. I mean, if you feel so relaxed, you feel so light, and you don't get sick easily. That's the benefit. That's the investment that you will get. You know, brothers and sisters, you deserve the best in this world. Amen? Yes, you do. In fact, God was, God is, in the mind of God, He said, you know, I love my people, and I'm going to give them the best that nature can be. And can have. No. This is your food. Once you eat it, it not only nourishes you, but it heals you. It heals any def deficiency or any sickness in your body because there are food that heals. God, food heals. Next slide, please. Only the best for your body. Amen? Next slide. Do you still have one more slide? Eat God's food and be healed. Amen? Let's all stand.
I hope you've learned something today. Amen? You know, for the first time attendees, you see it in the, in the feast, we don't only talk about spiritual things. We don't only talk about the Word of God. Yes, we experience God's Word, God's presence, the Holy Mass, but in the feast, we want to take care of your personal needs as well. We want, we want you to experience the grace of God, not just spiritually, but even physically, through your body. We want you to, be, to grow healthier, to, to, grow, to become healthier as you grow old. You know, my, my dream is to just, you know, like what I've said, be 90 years old and still climb the stairs. You know? Be 90 years old and still walk a mile. Like me, I, I, I go on a treadmill every week. At least I run 7 kilometers every week. And if I do twice, I do 14 kilometers a week. You know, I'd like to do that. Even if I'm 80 years old or 70 years old, I'd like to live my life to the fullest because I want to serve God. I want to serve God while I'm still breathing. And I cannot do that if I'm sick, if I'm tired, if my body is already complaining. No, I cannot do that. But I, would, I, I, want to, I have decided to live a healthy life, to eat, to eat healthy food, because I want to serve the Lord as long as I can, as old as I can, as my body can. Amen? Brothers and sisters, I'd like to end this talk by sharing one story with you it happened about a few years ago in december and you know my, my our company one time sponsored a feeding a christmas party for ki children we have uh, a we have one company who has several squatters or, or poor children around and we sponsored a a christmas party so we brought jollibee and they were eating and you know i noticed this one boy he was about maybe nine or ten years old and he was not eating his share of Jollibee. He was just, everybody was eating and he was just there sitting. And then I asked him, oh, Toy, why are you not eating your, and he told me, uh, I'll just wait once the fin they finish the program because I, wa I will go home and bring this food so that my other brothers and sisters could also eat. Now, oh, wow, I just so touched a young boy like him can can be so unselfish, can think about not only just feeding himself, but you know, thinking of his brother and sisters who also can enjoy the food that he wants to enjoy. Sisters and brothers, for many people, feeding is surviving. Yes? I mean, you, you, you cannot live without food. We need food to survive. But you know what? Eating is, not, is more than just surviving. Eating is, and listen to this, eating is only also about sharing. Yes? Eating is not only about living. Eating is also about giving. When I was young, my favorite dish, fish, was fish, and it's called galunggong. I mean, for foreigners, galunggong is a small mackerel. It's just, uh, just tiny, tiny mackerel. And uh, it's the cheapest fish. That's why it's, they, they say it's the poor man's fish. So that was my favorite, especially if you fry it crispy, right? You know, it's, uh, wow, you eat, it's crispy, crispy galunggong. And, and you know what? Whenever we have galunggong in the house, my mother would always take the head part, the head small portion and then take out the head and that's that's hers and i would always think that you know wow my mother likes the head of the galunggong you know i like the whole galunggong but she likes the head she likes the head. it's always the head and the head you know now now that i'm a parent i realize that my mother would always take the head so that i can take the best part yes you know, eating is just just not surviving Eating is also giving and sharing. In fact, you know, like, for some of you, you come here to the feast, you have problems. You're facing trials in life. You're broken. You're, you're, you're sinful. You're, you're hurt. But it's, it's okay. Because God wants you to share that brokenness, that problem. That struggle, that sacrifice to others 
who are also experiencing brokenness in their life. This is what the feast is all about. It's about giving. It's about sharing. Yes, you come to the feast and you know in, in, in your head and in your heart that whenever you come here, God blesses you. I mean, this is a place of blessing. And true enough, when, when you're here, God opens the floodgates of heaven and just pour out blessing upon you because He knows that you come here, you want to be blessed by God, and, and, and He does that for you. He blesses you abundantly, exceedingly. And you feel so blessed. And you experience the presence of God, the comfort of God, the hope of God. But you know what? You know, the, you know what? The happiest people who go home from the feast are not those who only come here because they want to be blessed. They come here because they want to receive the blessing. The happiest people who come to the feast, those that go home happiest, are those who come here because they not only want to receive, but they also come to the feast because they want to give. They want to share their life, even their brokenness even their, their need for healing, even their hurtful heart. Because it's not all about surviving. It's not all about living. It's also about giving and sharing. You know, the biggest sharing and giving that you can ever have in your life is this. If you can forgive someone for all the hurt that that person has done to you, that's the biggest giving that you can ever give in your life. Yes. And maybe you just think about people who have hurt you in your life. I mean, hurting words, accusation, maybe just hurt you so much deeply. Now is the time for you to give. Because you've been receiving so much from God in this feast. So much blessing in your life. So much hope in your life. But you want to be happy. You want to be the happiest person who will go home today. And God is asking you to just, you know, open your heart to Him and allow Him to heal your brokenness, your hurtful heart. And you can start doing that by just forgiving that person. Whatever hurt that person has given you, has done to you, or even not only to you, but to your loved one, to your family, that's the biggest giving that you can have, that you can do. Maybe that person is not here. Maybe that person is far away. But I want you to just tell the Lord right now that because you want to give yourself in this place and in this feast, you want to tell God, Lord, I just want to forgive this person. Yes, in my heart, maybe I cannot. But I want to just overcome my heart and tell you with faith that I want to forgive. Because when I forgive, when you forgive, you release yourself. You become free from the hurtful feelings. Yes, you are. You can be free. Don't let that anger, that resentment, just destroy any happiness that God wants to, you to experience in your life. Experience the healing power of God. Experience the joy of forgiving maybe maybe you have hurt someone too maybe for you I mean we're not perfect people even in community we're, we're this is the, I've all, I, I told the leaders yesterday you know you, you can only hurt people who are close to you I mean if people are far away from you you can never hurt them they're too far to be hurt and it's usually in, in families in communities where there's a relationship that's so close that you experience hurt that you can hurt people you can hurt them by words by actions but you know what the biggest healing as well for you is to ask for forgiveness and that's the biggest giving that you can have that you can experience in your life and that's the biggest healing that God wants to do for you. So today, like what we did last time, before we worship God, before we praise Him in this, in this temple, we want to just take this time to, to just share our brokenness, our hurtfulness, our trials and difficulties. We just want to share it by 
by sharing it with everybody, not by expelling them our brokenness, our hurtfulness, our, our experience. No, we just want to just go around and touch them and, and hug them and tell them God is in control. God loves you. That God is in control of your life. Can you just go around, just, just touch someone, embrace someone, and tell that person that God is here, God is in control of your life, that you will be healed, that there are greater things stored for you by God. You can ask forgiveness to that person if you've hurt that person's feeling. You can forgive that person if maybe you've been hurt before and maybe you cannot forgive this time. Not today, but you can just embrace that person and tell him, I want to start this day by just forgiving you. This is a place of sharing. This is a place of miracle. And this is a place of healing. And we want to experience that today. Amen.